All right, moving into chapter 11. Uh, primary topic of chapter 11 is solutions. And I sort of have a subset that we'll get into colligative properties here as well. Now, specifically, a solution is two or more substances together in a single phase. We usually use the term solvent and solute to describe these um, different parts of a solution. Typically, a solution is a liquid, but we'll see gases are also solutions. Gases mixed together pretty easily. Um, but there's also such a thing as a solid solution, where you have two materials kind of combined, spread evenly through each other. But it's a solid phase, so that could be considered a solid solution. Now, one of the primary aspects of solution is how we describe how much of the different portions there are, how much solid is there versus how much solvent is there. And going back into Chem 1, we learned one method of doing this called molarity. Um, and this is certainly the most useful for chemical reactions because it gives us an easy link to how many moles of material there are present in our um, solution. So molarity is, was defined as moles of the solute per liters of the total solution. So not just the solvent, but the total solution that you make when you mix them together. Um, and we abbreviated that with a capital M. I know technically it's an italicized capital M, but not quite so easy to draw. Um, that's one we'll come back to and we'll use in this chapter as well. But one of the things that we want to focus on here are other ways we would describe concentration, how much of a solute is dissolved in a solvent or similar relationships. So there's a couple of new ones that we want to think about that I'm going to describe below. Um, so one new one we'll use this chapter is called molality. Um, so just one letter difference. It's an L there instead of an R. Um, molality is defined as how many moles of solute there are relative to how many kilograms of the solvent there are. Uh, so instead of part over whole, like molarity, molality is part over part. And we'll see molality is useful um, for circumstances where temperature is changing because um, the volume of a solution can actually change some with temperature. So if you're dependent in your calculation on volume, molarity might actually change with temperature, whereas mass um, is not dependent on temperature. So molality is a little better for situations where we might be looking at different temperatures and we don't want to have a different value for concentration at those temperatures. Right? We'll use molarity where we include the temperature in our calculation. Okay, so molality moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. We will also want to look at a quantity called mole fraction. And the symbol for mole fraction is the capital chi, so the Greek letter chi. So it looks kind of like an X, but I use this kind of you know, wing on the side to show that it's a little fancier than an X. Mole fraction is moles and it could be either. It's either moles of solute compared to the total moles in the system. So that would be moles of solute plus moles of solvent. Or you could also do one for moles of the solvent. How many moles of solvent are there compared to how many total moles are there? And a little strange, but it's typically thought of as moles of solute, but we'll see in the application we're going to use it for in this chapter, it's moles of solvent that we want to compare to. So it'll be mole fraction of solvent that we want instead of just mole fraction of solute. So maybe a little subscript solvent there would help out when we're going to do that. So think about that as we get to it in the problems. Um, and then the third measure of concentration we want to talk about now really isn't particularly new, but what's new is we'll want to be able to move from one version of describing concentration to another. So this would be weight percent. And more technically, mass percent is probably a little better way to describe this. Uh, as long as we're on Earth, weight and mass are the same. But if we're not under Earth's gravity, weight and mass aren't quite the same. So mass percent is probably a little better way to describe this. Um, this is the mass of your solute. So this would be grams of solute 
divided by grams of the entire solution. So like any percentage, this is a part over a whole. And, and like any percentage, it is scaled relative to 100. So we'd always have this extra 100 in there as well. Now, I use weight percent in my notes because in medical situations, this is called weight percent. It is not called a mass percent. Um, any kind of pharmaceutical preparation you get will sometimes have a little W slash W on it, which means it's the weight of the solute compared to the weight of the solvent. And for some solutions, um, those weights might actually change to volume. So you can see a weight, weight percent, you can see a volume, volume percent, or you can see a weight to volume percent. In fact, something like rubbing alcohol, which is uh, isopropyl alcohol, dissolved to some extent in water, right? sometimes it's about 70%. Um, since those are both liquids, it's common to measure them in terms of volume. So when you buy 70% isopropyl alcohol solution at a grocery store or a pharmacy, that's generally a volume to volume percent. A saline solution is usually a weight to volume percent because you can measure out sodium chloride as a solid. Uh, you can figure out what, how much it weighs. Uh, but then you dissolve it in water, which is measured as a liquid. So that's considered a weight to volume percent. Okay. Now, we want to be able to kind of use all of these versions of concentration and also interconvert. convert 